Hello everyone, my name is Shohrukh Bekrasulov, a lecturer from Marketing Management. Today's topic is Marketing View of Product and Pricing. So let's get started. Pricing strategies usually change as the product passes through its life cycle. The introductory stage is especially challenging. Companies bringing out a new product face the challenge of setting price for the first time. They can choose between two uh, broad strategies, which are market skimming pricing and market penetration pricing. Market skimming pricing or uh, price skimming involves setting a high price for a new product to skim maximum revenues layer by layer from the segments willing, the, uh, willing to pay the high price. The company makes fewer but more profitable sales in this uh, way. For example, when Apple first introduced the iPhone, its initial price was as high as $599 per phone. The phones were purchased only by customers who really wanted to sleek new gadget and could afford to pay a high price for it. Six months later, Apple dropped the price to $399 for a 8GB uh, model and $499 for 16GB model to attract new buyers. Within a year, it dropped prices again to $199 and $299 respectively. In this way, Apple has skimmed the maximum amount of revenue from the various segments of the market. Rather than setting a high initial price to skim off small but profitable market segments, some companies use market penetration pricing. Companies set a low initial price to penetrate the market quickly and deeply to attract a large number of buyers quickly and win a large market share. The high sales volume results in falling costs, allowing companies to cut their prices even further. For example, Samsung has used penetration pricing to quickly build demand for its mobile devices in fast-growing emerging markets. So you can get introduced with the case uh, broadly if you stop the video, but we need to move on. The strategy for setting a product's price often has to be changed when the product is a part of a product mix. In this case, the firm looks for a set of prices that maximizes its profits on the total product mix. We now take a closer look at the five product mix pricing situations summarized in this slide. Product line pricing, optional product pricing, captive product pricing, by product pricing, and product bundle pricing. In product line pricing, management must determine the price steps to set between the various products in a line. The price steps should take into account cost differences between products in the line. More important, they should account for differences in customer perceptions of value of different features. For example, at a Mr. Clean car wash, you can choose from any of six wash packages, ranging from a basic exterior clean only bones wash for $5 to an exterior clean shine and protect gold package for $12. Uh, and also, many companies use optional product pricing, offering to sell optional or accessory products along with the main product. For example, uh, you are offered to choose the extra ingre ingredients along with the standard walk in walk restaurants in Tashkent. Yeah, uh, while you are selecting uh, the type of noodle which comes the with the standard quantity of vegetables and meat, uh, you are offered to choose some extra uh, sauces, some extra meat, some extra vegetables as well. Captive product pricing. Companies that make products that must be used along with the main product are using captive product pricing. Examples of captive products are razor blades, cartridges, 
video games, printer cartridges, uh, single serve coffee pots, and ebooks. Producers of the main products razors, video game consoles, printers, single cup coffee brewing systems, and tablet computers often price them low and set high markups on the suppliers. So, for example, uh, as you see from the picture, there is a uh, capsule coffee maker whose price uh, starts from $100, uh, comes along with the or requires a capsule coffees uh, whose price starts from $20 per several savings. Byproduct pricing. Producing products and services often generates byproducts. If the byproducts have no value and if getting rid of them is costly, this will affect the pricing of the main product. So this will increase the pricing of main product. Using byproduct pricing, the company seeks a market for these byproducts to help offset the cost of disposing of them and help make the price of the main product more competitive. So shortly they sell those byproducts. The byproducts themselves can even turn out to be profitable, turning trash into cash. For example, selling a wood uh, chippings by a furniture maker to a paper manufacturers. Product bundle pricing. Using product bundle pricing, sellers offer combine several products and offer the bundle at a reduced price. For example, fast food restaurants bundle a burger price and a soft drink at a combo price. Price bundling can promote the sales of products consumers might not otherwise buy. But the combined price must be low enough to get them to buy the bundle. Price adjustment strategies. Companies usually adjust their basic prices to account for various customer differences and changing situations. Here we examine the seven price adjustment strategies. First, discount and allowance pricing, segmented pricing, psychological pricing, promotional pricing, Geographic pricing, dynamic pricing, international pricing. Let's start with discount and allowance pricing. Most companies adjust their basic price to reward customers for certain responses, such as paying bills early, volume purchases, and off-season buying. These price adjustments called discounts and allowances. One form of discount is cash discount, a price reduction to buyers who pay the bills promptly or before uh, before the deadline, for example. A quantity discount is a price reduction to buyers who buy large volumes, as shown in the picture. Uh, if you uh, buy a bucket of KFC, you pay less rather than buying them in uh, small quantities. A functional discount, also called as trade discount, trade channel members who perform uh, certain functions such as selling, storing and record keeping. So this uh, type of uh, discount is offered to the uh, retailers and distributors of channels. Yeah. A seasonal discount is a price a reduction to buyers who buy merchandise or service out of season. For example, when you buy a coat uh, in, a, in summertime so you get a season discount. Allowances are another type of reduction from the list price. For example, trading allowances are price reductions given for turning in an old item when buying a new one. Promotional allowances are payments or price reductions that reward dealers for participating in advertising and sales support programs. Segmented pricing involves selling a product or service at two or more prices, where the difference in the price is not based on the difference in cost. Companies will often adjust their basic prices to allow for different customers' patients and time. So uh, this picture is also an example of a, a ticket price segmentation. So price segmentation is divided also into four types, uh, which are uh, customer segment pricing, 
different uh, customers pay different prices for the same product or service. For example, student uh, prices and the prices for products uh, dedicated for retired people. Product form pricing. Different versions of product are priced differently but not according to the differences in their costs. For example, business and economy classes. Uh, here's mentioned the difference in price uh, higher than difference in cost. Yeah, uh, of course they are uh, costs uh, somehow vary. So the, the cost of business class is higher uh, from economy class, but but it's not as significant as the difference between their prices. Location based pricing. A company charges different prices for different locations, even though. Uh, the cost of offering each location is the same. For example, theaters vary their seats prices because of audience preferences for certain locations. Yeah. In fact, in theaters, in concerts, the first uh, rows are always expensive uh, or more expensive than the other rows. Yeah. Time based pricing. A firm varies uh, its price by the season the month, the day, and even the hour. For example, resorts the weekend and seasonal discounts, flight prices high for Christmas, and etc. In using psychological pricing, sellers consider the psychology of a price, uh, not simply the economics. For example, consumers usually perceive higher priced products as having higher quality when they can judge the quality of a product by examining it or by calling on past experience with it, they use price less to judge quality. But when they cannot judge quality because they lack of information or skill, uh, price becomes an important quality signal. Another aspect of psychological pricing is reference price. Price that buyers carry in their minds and refer to when looking at a given product. The reference price might be formed by nothing, current prices, remembering past prices or assessing the buying situation. Sellers can influence uh, or use the consumer's reference prices when setting price. For example, a grocery retailer might place its store branded chocolate paste at a price of $2.49 next to more expensive uh, branded Nutella uh, at the price of $3.79 uh, and make its own uh, production or own product more attractive. Even small differences in prices can signal product differences and 9 or 0.99 at the end of the price often signals a bargain. Although actual prices differences might be small, the impact of such psychological tactics can be big. Promotional pricing is temporarily uh, pricing products below the list price and sometimes even below costs to increase short-run sales or to increase hype in the market. Geographic pricing is used for customers in different parts of the country or the world. A company also must uh, decide how to price its products for customers located in different parts of the uh, United States or the world, as shown in the picture. Yeah? The main uh, plant, for example, uh, is located in St. Louis and uh, it uh, has consumers uh, from all over the USA. Should the company risk uh, losing the business of more distant consumers by charging them higher prices to cover the higher shipping costs? Or should the company charge all customers the same prices regardless of location? And dynamic pricing, uh, which involves adjusting prices continually to meet the characteristics and needs of individual customers and situations. And in the example, here's given the uh, prices for uh, air flights, uh, which 
range from the day by day uh, and constantly. Uh, every Sunday you can purchase a ticket from New York to Los Angeles for three hundred fifty dollars, uh, and from on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday you can purchase it for reduced three hundred dollars. Uh, these uh, prices are set in accordance to the demand and in accordance to the uh, customer's needs. International pricing. Companies that market their products internationally uh, must decide what prices to charge in different countries. The price that a company should charge in a specific country depends on many factors, including economic conditions, competitive situations, laws and regulations, and the nature of the wholesaling and retailing system in that particular country. In some cases, the company may find it desirable to initiate either a price cut or a price increase. In both cases, it must anticipate possible buyer and competitor reactions. So, price cuts occur uh, due to excess capacity and increased market share and price increases occur due to cost inflation, uh, increased demand in the market for your product and lack of supply. Uh, of course, uh, those initiations has their results in the forms of the reactions of uh, your consumers or buyers. So here are given uh, the buyer's reactions to your pricing chains. If you increase the price of your product, consumers may uh, add your product into the category of hot products. And uh, some consumers also might think that your company is greedy. If you cut the price, mm, consumers might think that the new model will be available soon, as happens with the uh, Apple products and the other uh, gadgets. And they might say also models are not selling well and uh, they might doubt at the quality. For example, they might think that your quality decreased, so, so the price is decreasing. Also, a firm considering a price change must worry about the reactions of its competitors as well as those of its consumers. Uh, competitors are most likely to react when the number of firms involved in small, uh, when the product is uniform and when the buyers are well informed about products and prices. So here are uh, the questions or the standard questions which appear when your competitor or which appear in your competitor's mind when you change uh, your prices. So. They are why did the competitor change the price? Is the price cut permanent or temporary? Is the company trying to grab market share? Is the company doing poorly or trying to increase sales? Is it a signal to decrease industry prices to stimulate demand? Also, uh, here are given some sets of actions. Uh, as shown in the figure, the ways a company might assess and respond to a competitor's price cut. Uh, when your competitor cuts the price, use it uh, in your pricing and when you want to cut your price, then use it for expecting the listed actions from your competitor. So here is the, the summary of our today's lecture and the list of further reading uh, textbooks. I would like to thank all of you for your attention, take care, goodbye.